darkness be used to shine light on the truth? Our topic today is the 10 miraculous plagues. And I'm sure many of you are asking, well, when we talk about the miraculous, we're talking about something uh, with a good or positive connotation. And when you talk about plagues, it's something disastrous, curse-ridden, uh, and negative. And so the reason why we called it the 10 Miraculous Plagues, we'll get into in a few minutes here. But today on Light and Darkness, I'm here with my dad, and we're going to be looking at the story of uh, Moses and Pharaoh and the 10 plagues that God sent down. And we're going to compare and contrast the characteristics and attributes of these two people and how that applies to light and darkness and how that applies to us um, living here in the West in 2014. Yes. Hello, Samar. I thank you for that introduction. And uh, you mentioned about the 10 plagues. And those were some of the miracles that God did. But also there were some other miracles when uh, God used uh, Moses to deliver his people. And really, this is a, a, a book of Genesis or the life of Moses and Pharaoh. This is about God defending his people and, and giving them deliverance and freedom. And also, now, uh, like in the New Testament, uh, it's obviously clear in the New Testament, giving us the eternal life, but also give hope and possession. And the last thing is revenge. It's we do not need to revenge to our enemy. God will revenge. And in these 10 plagues, God was revenging against Pharaoh, against the darkness. Why? Because of his pride. Secondly, because he was uh, defiling God. And for 400 years, I think 420 years, Pharaoh was, um, Israelites were in slavery, and he was doing mass killing uh, to them and their children, and persecution and suffering. And then God, he said, enough is enough. I will give some warning, but if this man Pharaoh will not listen, then I have right even to wipe out the whole kingdom and nation of Egypt. So wh what's the difference between revenge and warning? Were there, were oh, the no. Plagues? Warning is alarm bell. Hey, that kind of language is be, ca be careful. I'm warning you. I'm going to warn you one time, two times, three times. But revenge, mm -hmm. it's when, when the enemy becomes stubborn and he says no and no and no. And then God, he intervened. He said no. These are my people. I will jump in. I will deliver them. And I will show you who I am. I am who I am. And then he removed that power of darkness and released his people from that persecution or suffering or whatever. And so talk to us a little bit about the attributes of both Moses and Pharaoh. Right. Yeah. Moses, actually, he was also uh, born in Egypt into an Egyptian royal or a royal family, uh, but as a slave Hebrew, as a slave Hebrew. And at that time, um, Moses, he, was, he should have died, be killed. But uh, by miraculous, uh, God's hand was upon him. Why? Because God has a purpose. However, uh, the same Moses, when he grew up, Although he killed an Egyptian because he was violent, that Egyptian, but God didn't tell him to go and kill him. Anyway, he did it. It was wrong. And it took 40 years later until God met with Moses in the burning bush. And then, But even there, when God sent Moses to deliver his people, Moses said, no, I cannot. I think I am not the right person. He started bringing some excuses. And then, but finally, he went. And he did. But when he, now uh, let's talk about Pharaoh. Pharaoh, he was the prince, the big king of not only the, of Egypt, but the whole world the, those days. And Pharaoh, he was full of pride. He was uh, a dictator, uh, a, a brutal dictator, abusing and oppressing 
the Israelites. And Israelites in those days, there were something about 1.5 million people. And uh, <clears throat> at the beginning, Pharaoh hardened his heart. And God gave him so many warnings. But when he kept on that wrong way, then God said, I will harden your heart more than that. So, so when you say that Pharaoh hardened his heart, yes. so are you saying that there was a point in time mm. in history where the oh, heart of yes. Pharaoh was not hardened? Yes. So, uh, uh, not hardened? Yeah. Um, I don't, the Bible doesn't say uh, that, but from the beginning, it says that this man, Pharaoh, he was so bad, as I said, dictator, persecuting, and the 1.5 million of Israelites were suffering, not for like a few years, not for 100 or 200 years. For more than 400 years, he was persecuting them. He wa they were suffering and uh, brutally okay, in his dictatorship. So I don't think there was some time that his heart was not hardened. And not only that, let me add a little bit there. Even his own people, the Egyptians, they were not good. Why? Because they were for him about persecuting 1.5 1 uh, million. But even none of them stood up against Pharaoh and said, my Lord, that is wrong. These are innocent people. Why they should go through this suffering for 400 years? And talk to us now a little bit about Moses mm. and apply that to today. What are some of the characteristics that we find in Moses? And why did God choose Moses to set the Israelites free? God chose whom he wanted to choose. Moses was not special. Moses was just a normal Israelite one. And uh, today also, God is still seeking or looking, not seeking, he's looking uh, for or calling, sorry, he's calling so many people to do the same thing what Moses did. Moses delivered his people from slavery, from oppression, from persecution, and today we have more than the number of 1.5 million of Israelites. The, we have uh, one, maybe instead of 1.5 million, we have 1 billion, 1.5 billion they are under a, any kind of other slavery. And these guys, they, uh, these people, they need uh, freedom, they need to be delivered, but God is calling people like me and you and the viewers, would you like to come? I want to send you like Moses. Some of us, they say, yes, Lord. Some others say, no, that's not for me. Two part question. Mm. The first part is, so you talked about oppression persecution, mm. suffering, and yeah. slavery mm. in the context of this story. And abusing. And mm. abuse. Mm. And you also talked about the attributes and characteristics of a pharaoh right. and the fact that he was a dictatorship, right. uh, that, that he was, that he was uh, a dictator. And, today, and a murderer. Of and a murderer. And today we're talking about light and darkness. Mm. And so because pharaoh stands for darkness, Yes. Are you saying that Pharaoh's um, method of oppression, persecution, suffering, mm. imposing suffering and, and, uh, and slavery for the Israelite people is a form of darkness? Definitely a form of darkness. However, still God forgive and give other uh, um, uh, opportunity. And he gave to Pharaoh so many times to, to stop. Stop it. You are on the, right di on the wrong direction. Like you remember the story of the prodigal son. Okay? Mm -hmm. And today we have some uh, kings or presidents or princes or leaders, politicians. They are doing the same thing what Pharaoh did. Mm -hmm. And today, like you remember, like in the Middle East, so many leaders, they did what Pharaoh did to their and to now, and last one, let's say Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, mm -hmm. who is also uh, the president of uh, our of an Islamic state, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, he is doing exactly what Pharaoh was doing, okay? Uh, although the ideology is different, but 
It's the same blindness, the same results. Mm -hmm. Results. Uh, Saddam Hussein, uh, Al Qaddafi, and so many Hitler, so many people, they have not learned lessons from the past, from the, these characteristics of the Bible. The Bible is all warning to human beings so that we should repent and come back to God. And finally, as we close uh, this episode, uh, again, we're talking about light and darkness and how the story, one story, one event that's happened in the past applies mm. to our lives today in a practical way. Mm. And so you talked about freedom. God sent Moses to uh, set the Israelites free yeah. from the slavery mm. and the oppression of Pharaoh. And so many viewers might say, you know, the world offers freedom. The mm. world offers right. a second chance. Mm. The world offers a chance to get out and not be under any sort of bondage. Right. What's your response to that? I think that is a fake freedom. That is a false freedom. So many false freedoms or false religion and even false democracy. But uh, Jesus said, if the Son of Man will set you free, you will be free indeed. But I want to uh, just to read a passage from uh, here. I should have been read it okay, about hardening the heart of man. And uh, that applies to every one of us. Any leader, whether a pastor, a bishop, uh, a president, um, a, a general manager, whatever. Uh, in Exodus chapter 7, and starting from verse 3, God said, but I will harden Pharaoh's heart. And though I multiply my signs and wonders in Egypt, he will not listen to me. That means Pharaoh will not listen to me. This is God is speaking. Pharaoh will not listen to me. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt, and with mighty acts of judgment, I will bring out my divisions or my people, the Israelites. You see? When God decides, that's it, he decided. So he will do it. But it's better to do it that we will obey him. Now, if a, a, a man will try to oppose, well, God is going to, he will do what he decided to do. But the one who disobey and oppose, they will suffer. And uh, <clears throat> God, he could have, he had right actually to not only punish Pharaoh, he had right to, pun to punish all Egypt, to wipe Egypt out of the first face of the earth. Why? Because the Egyptian also, they were for Pharaoh. They didn't stand up against him. So God had right. And all those, the beginning, uh, the, the, those plagues, the beginning, those were warning to him and to his generals and officials and the people of Egypt, but none of them listened. And then when they, they hardened their hearts, then God said, I'm going to harden your heart more. And he had right to wipe it off, but by his grace and mercy, he didn't do it. But he, if he has done it, he would have still been a just God, as he did it in the time of Noah, but he did it. And we, we have to end this episode, but I want to conclude by challenging the audience to look into not only the characteristics or attributes of uh, both Moses and Pharaoh, but go um, uh, step by step into each of the ten plagues that God brought down to the life of Pharaoh. And today we call the episode the ten miraculous plagues and see physically, literally, and metaphorically speaking, how each of those plagues are and can be miraculous in each of our lives if God really intends them to be warnings for us. Whether in our lives we are rebellious as Pharaoh was at some point or we remain on the side where Moses was. You know, I just remembered one, uh, one thing, a, a, a comparison between what Pharaoh did and what uh, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi from ISIS did. Uh, can I just read one verse from Exodus chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 16, about killing the babies, the newborn babies of the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Okay, He said, when you are helping the Hebrew woman, that's Pharaoh, 
when you are helping the Hebrew woman during childbirth on the delivery stool, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. That what he was doing, and that was supposed Moses also to be killed. Mm -hmm. But today, the same scenario is repeating itself. It's not only killing, but also burying children alive. Mm -hmm. And that's, you can see it in social media. Mm -hmm. That is what he is behind it. It's the same ideology. I, uh, they, he, this man, Abu Bakr Baghdadi, he wants to wipe out all the Christians or any other non-Muslims in the world, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, if, if he will be allowed, he will reach America also and Europe. If, if he will not be stopped. So that's why God was so angry and he started warning him miracle after miracle, punishment after punishment. Still he said no, no. And I do know also ISIS and Abu Bakr Baghdadi and his group, they will always, they will say no to God. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that concludes our episode for today. You've been watching Light or Darkness on ABN.